Welcome back to Low Buck Garage. I'm back working on this tug again. Now, in part one of this video series, I uh, got the thing in for basically scrap metal price. It didn't run, it didn't drive, and I barely got it running. I just did the minimum to get it functional. In the second video, I got it actually refined a bit, so you just hop in, turn the key, drive it around, and it works normal. And, uh, well, this is the third part. And I go from having a vehicle you can use to the most useful vehicle in my yard. Let me show you how that happened. I picked up something interesting for this project. This is a Fairlead boom. Now, you're probably familiar with the little winch Fairleads that have the rollers that allow the cable to go at different angles. Uh, these are meant for uh, using every once in a while. For continuous duty, this is a Fairlead that has a giant pulley that can run the cable in and out without bending it very far. And then, rollers on the side, so if you need to pull from an angle, it's got that covered too. So this will allow a winch cable to pull in any direction possible. And I like that concept. It's been sitting around for a long time. I bought it used, obviously. Um, it's been sitting around long enough. There were birds living in it. There's the bird's nest. Uh, also, these don't roll anymore. So I gotta get this thing working again before I can just permanently attach it. Got this apart. Luckily, it's nice plain bearings. They're just bronze bushings. Uh, with some solid steel on the end. So this is pretty corroded, but it'll clean up easy. I already hit this one with a wire brush, so it should be good. I'm hitting these with a little bit of scotch bright, and uh, it seems to be taking off the old grease and remaining rust pretty well. So now, yeah, they rotate now. And uh, I'll pile a little bit of grease in there. All right, I'll pile a lot of grease in there, and uh, this should be good. So that's okay. The big pulley, on the other hand, that one was completely worn out. Now this is the upper pulley here. Uh, this was wobbly, so I took it apart. What we've got here, this bolt goes through, has a sleeve go over it here, and then the pulley goes over that sleeve. And you can see, well, that's a pretty sloppy fit. Uh, that thing's completely worn out. So, I got a new bushing. It's not quite the right size. It's too long, and uh, it's a real tight fit. So on this sleeve, I can just barely get it to start in there. So I'm gonna have to open up that fit a little bit, chop the end off, face it to length, and then press it in here. But first we're gonna get this old one out, make sure we don't have any other issues inside here. Now, I discovered a minor issue. Uh, when I measured this bushing, it was still installed. It's actually mushroomed. So uh, the bushing is actually smaller than the one I bought, um, which is a little bit of an issue because this one's not gonna fit. But at least it's bigger. So I can take a skim cut, make this one smaller, we'll make it become this one. <laughs> Now this is that bushing that goes in the center. I want to clean up that OD, make sure there's no corrosion on it, smooth it out a little, because it looks like it's got a pretty good amount of wear. One quick way to do that, take one of the old uh, belt sander belts that you've been hoarding next to your belt sander, in case you need to polish something. Flip it around. There we go. Now the sanding part's on the inside. You can pull on it good. You can guide it around. And that works real well for sanding ODs. You can also rotate it to a new spot on the belt every once in a while. You could do this with a new belt too if you wanted to, but I got enough old ones I can just keep going through them. There we go. There. I can see a few good grooves or some big, uh, probably dirt got in there and gouged it around. So I'm going to try to polish up what I can until I get a nice fit on this bushing. Let's see how we're doing already. Yeah, it's kind of there. I might have to bore out this bushing too. I don't know what actual size it's supposed to be. 
but uh, we're pretty close. So I'm gonna polish out this groove and then sewer mat. There we go. So now, let's see, ooh, fits right over. That will work, nice. Just pop this out of the freezer. Oh yeah, it's a slip fit now almost. Actually, it was a pretty tight fit before I put it in the freezer. So, that'll be good. Now what I'm doing, so I wanna make sure a little bit of bushing sticks out on either side. That way I don't run on the steel here. I was trying to find a winch to actually do some lifting with this thing. And I need a pretty hefty one. Obviously I hit the used marketplace first, marketplace Craigslist, etc. And uh, winches are really expensive around here. Um, you can't touch one under $400. It's anywhere decent size. A lot of those are 8,000 pound ones. And I wanted to be able to pull at least uh, 10,000 pounds because that's what the truck's rated to tow. So uh, just as I was going through trying to find something that I could work with, I got a coupon in my email. And uh, there's a 12,000 pound winch for $299. Way cheaper than I could buy it used. So I bought one and it's sitting here right now. I'm not sure if it's gonna be reliable and I'm also not sure if it's gonna actually pull 12,000 pounds. But uh, it's got a warranty and uh, we're gonna find out real fast. Hook, got a wired remote control. Comes with a fair lead, control box, axle winch, more wire. Looks like circuit breakers. Okay. And let's see how this thing hooks up. We've got, ah, I was wondering about that. It's basically got two frames on either side. In theory, I should be able to feed the cable out the bottom and mount it on these holes. That way when I pull on it, it goes straight into the mounting surface. I don't have to worry about shear on any of these bolts. That can be handy. It appears we have a lever that I'm gonna to need to be able to get to, so I gotta keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, well, it's a little shiny, but we'll give it a shot. Now I dragged this thing to the shop here. Basically what I wanna do, it's a nice wide A-frame, which would be great, but I can't actually attach it to the vehicle because out there it's just the thin fenders. So what I need to do is basically take the angle when I get up to my widest point where I can fit in the bed, I want to make them go straight. And I found out it's right after this gusset here, which looks like a good place to cut it anyway. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off these tubes here and then bring them in so I get a parallel line here and then we go into the taper. And then I can add some bracing in this area. But uh, the easiest way to deal with these is I ran a straight edge across because I don't know what angle they're actually bent at. It's hard to measure a big angle like that. So the straight edge measured down so I know it's square, I did a line across. Then I could take my line across and figure out how far off that is from uh, perpendicular to the beam. Then split the difference. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it at half the angle that it's off. That way I'm gonna cut it, take this piece, flip it over, that half angle is gonna double I'm mean, gonna get the full angle I need. Here is my straight across the two pieces. Here is my perpendicular line. Got an angle halfway in between. So that little piece of the pie and this little piece of the pie, we're gonna have an extra bit there. We're gonna flip this one to that side and that'll make this turn exactly the angle we want and everything will line up there. Now on these beams, I wanna cut them as precisely as I can. Because in order to um, flip this over, I need those to line up pretty well and remain fairly straight. Um, on small tubing, it's not too big of a deal because you are a little bit off on an angle. You have a small gap because you're not going very far. On big tubing like this, if you get start cutting an angle, you can have a huge gap that's uh, unfillable. So what I did is I measured it from an index point. In this case, this top um, A-frame bit here uh, has nice square edges. And they're the same on top and bottom, so I used that to index it and measured back. Now, once I did that, I actually cut this side already and before, I flipped it over, I cut this side to get my angle. I also used a square to get a straight line to make sure those two are gonna line up. So, 
I'm pretty confident this thing is going to be a fairly square cut, about as good as you can do with a sawzall. Uh, so now I'm going to cut either side, lining up my two other cuts, make sure those two connect, and I should have something that will come out pretty straight when I weld it. Now here's what the result is. Uh, the joint is flush on the outside. I've got a bit of gap on the inside, but not too bad. Um, I got this one pretty good. I didn't do as well on the other side. Um, that one I was off by about a degree. You can see I have a gap, oh, maybe a half inch gap there. So uh, that's a bit of an issue. I'm going to do some grinding and maybe some filling. I'll get this one better. But um, if you measure right, you can do this. But most of the time, you have to do some fiddling afterwards. So I couldn't get the height I needed with the hoist above this arm and the chain hanging down. So I need to push from below. But I don't want it to fall on my head because I like my head. It's useful. So what I did, I flipped this arm upside down so where the chain normally came out is pointing up. And where the bolt was, I ran a new bolt, a long one, all the way through. So now that plate is bolted to this arm with a kind of sloppy fit that should let it pivot. So my theory is as I go up, that should hold it quite securely. It can't come off that hoist because it's bolted on, but still let it flex to so I can move it around. We'll see how that works. Okay, that actually looks like it's pretty plausible. Now what I want is I want the top of that arm about level with the roof of this thing. That way I'm not really adding any height, so I still have my same clearance, but it's as high as I can get. So, uh, do some measuring, but I think we're in roughly the right spot. Now I'm looking at mounting this boom here and I need something really sturdy to mount it to. Luckily, the floor of this bed is almost half inch thick. That's well over three eighths, probably seven sixteenths plate steel. That is sturdy. The fenders, eighth inch, strong, but not nearly as good as this, ba this uh, base here. However, I looked at how this whole bed was mounted. There are four bolts that go through the bed and the frame. And we have one, two, three, four. Those are like three eighths bolts. And that's it. That looks like all that holds this bed on. So even though this floor is solid as a rock, those bolts are kind of marginal. This whole bed could come right off. It's fine for putting weight in, but if I go to lift, uh, I'm gonna have a problem. So I'm going to reinforce the actual mounting of the bed before I start working with these plates. Now I've bored out those 3 8 holes to a half inch so we can get a good sized bolt in there. And added two more holes that go all the way through the bed and the frame rail. So uh, we're going to have a lot more uh, beefiness than we did before. Here's where I'm at right now. Got those bolts, got the half inch bolts in, a nice piece of 10 inch high I-beam. Got one on either side, both bolted in, all those bolts go through. There's no nuts, I gotta tighten them down, but they're all there and the bolts are sticking through, so that part's easy. And I got my placement where I'm happy with these uh, beams going up. So uh, next I need to make a cross member here that goes across, attaches these, attaches that, and I think I'm gonna mount the winch to it right there. Then need some vertical supports that actually hold up this whole framework here. So I'm thinking of going from here straight up to about there and then do some gusseting and plating to fill all that stuff in. Now years ago I collected a couple pieces of uh, I-beam that were used as a trailer tongue for hauling a mobile home. And I had two 10-foot sections I've had kicking around for a while. This project I think is a perfect use for. It. So I'm gonna try to chop these 10-footers up into the right sizes so that I can uh, actually make this whole thing with them plus that one A-frame I got. Now this piece is gonna be sort of a critical connector. Uh, what I'm gonna do is have this attach the A-frame on the sides, it's gonna to go to a base on the bottom, and then this is gonna hold the winch too. So this is gonna sort of tie the, uh, the A-frame to the winch and all be kind of connected. Now, I wanted to use the plasma table to go in and cut this out, but I need to get real close to this edge and the, well, the table's gonna hit it. So I gotta do this by hand. What I've done is I've laid out my pattern. I pop holes in. These are gonna be the mounting holes for the winch. I also popped in holes at the corner points. Uh, so I'm gonna make a square hole here for the cable to go through. 
So now I have rounded corners. I just have to cut straight lines in between all those, grind them smooth, everything will be fine. I also have to cut some notches on the end. That's where that A-frame is actually gonna go through. Uh, so this whole thing's gonna be tied together. So, I gotta get to some cutting here. The A-frame is actually uh, interlocked with this I-beam here. My welder's too small to actually make these really strong welds, but um, because it's interlocked, I think I'll be okay. And also, anywhere it's in tension, where welds are pulled on, that's where they're most likely to break. If they're pushing or something like that, it's less likely. But uh, here, they're going to be in tension, so I added two bolts, well, actually two per side, so four total. So I'm going to both bolt and weld those together, and that way I'm pretty confident that'll hold. Same thing with the uprights. Try to put all the joints in compression, so the welds aren't actually holding this up. They're just keeping it from uh, flopping off to the side. All the weight is going straight down into this platform. Uh, again here, the welds aren't actually structural. This thing is in a U saddle here. It's going to be welded in on this side. This one, I'm actually going to take that and bend it over and weld it there, which also tie the two halves together. Uh, so really, even though my welder is served me well for 20 years, it's way too small for what I'm doing. But I think by designing it properly and making sure nothing's really in tension, or if it is in tension, it's got a bolt supporting it, uh, I think I'll be okay. We'll find out. Those bolts are just there temporarily. They weren't long enough, they aren't strong enough. Uh, so I'm gonna pop them out and replace them with better ones. Got myself some grade eight bolts, a lot longer, and uh, made, myself, made myself some custom washers. This is half inch thick stock, and uh, that's gonna go on the top and spread the load out on these uh, I-beam flanges. And one other thing I noticed, they uh, had used wedges from the factory, and I think this was to correct the um, angle on the uh, frame rails to make sure that the bolt sits flat. Um, I had to bore them out to a half inch because they were for the 3 8 bolts that were on here, obviously. But that's no big deal. While I was doing that, I noticed something interesting. Notice there's a little tab off these, and that is on every one of them. What they did, they actually cast these pieces, and rather than cut them off the runners, they just snapped them off. So you've basically got a sharp, jagged piece of metal sticking off every one of these because they wanted to save the time of cutting. So, uh, interesting. Anyway, let me install these things. So what we're gonna have is we have the bolt, we're gonna have a chunk of steel, we're gonna have the thick plate of the floor of this bed, then we're gonna have frame rail, then we're gonna have one of these, and then the uh, actual nut. So uh, we're gonna sandwich a pile in here. Well, when you just uh, kind of eyeball things and guess at measurements and don't actually do any calculations, uh, eventually you have things that go wrong. Um, I don't know if you can see in here, this opening I had originally cut, it was too small. I went and cut it up bigger and it's better, but you can see when I put tension on the cable, it hits just a little bit right there. So I'm going to adjust that a little further. So uh, let me get an adjusting tool, precision adjusting tool here. All right, worst case scenario, I do have a little room. I could drill these holes lower and clear. I'm gonna to try to adjust that a little further. I had to take the winch off again. Um, I really had to lower this. As far as I bent this, it still was hitting just slightly. So I drilled new holes. You can see I've turned this into a bit of Swiss cheese, got extra holes here, got this wider here, bent this. And because I weakened this I-beam so much, I decided to add a piece of channel across it. So. When it pushes this way, these bolts will transfer the load over close to the corner. I might even do some diagonal gussets here. I think I'll, I think I will do that. Just want to make sure everything fits first. But uh, anyway, this is where we're at now. Hopefully, by lowering it and raising this a little bit, I'll have clearance so the cable isn't dragging. 
I also did a little flap wheel work to smooth that out. So if it does drag, it's not a sharp edge. So let's see how this goes. Well, that's where we're at now. Um, it does clear, so I think we'll be okay. Now, luckily the wiring's easy because the battery is in the back here. So I just use a standard bits of heater hose as a grommet and uh, ran the wire into the battery here. So that's all done. Even used the circuit breaker that came with the uh, winch. And uh, the only other issue I had, plugging in the controller, this spring used to have this coil on the bottom side, completely didn't fit. Now I flipped it around, it's just barely clearing. And when that roller moves on those uh, coils, I have a feeling this might knock this plug out. So I might have to move this box. But uh, it's enough to try for now, because I've never even seen this winch turn on. So we're gonna give it a shot here. It does something. Gauge gear, maybe. This has to line up to engage. That's kind of a pain. We'll try hitting the button and popping in gear. Nope. All right. We need a sinker on this. There we go. All right. It does stuff. That cable's all loose. Started off kind of loose and I made it way worse. So I'm gonna have to unspool the entire thing, rewind that. But we're actually hooked up so we can do something now. All right, we're going right for it. I've got the Jeep, it's in gear. So it'll be dragging the wheels on the end of the hook. I'm going sideways. So we're gonna have that fair lead actually work that direction. We're gonna twist the whole thing that way. We're gonna pull down. We're gonna try out the winch. Everything is gonna be one shot. Uh, there's a high likelihood of failure, so I'm going to be in the cab of the truck or hiding behind a door. So, uh, if it goes wrong, well, it'll be interesting. Anyway, let's find out what happens. So far, so good. I can see there's a shiny mark on that roller all the way around. So that is definitely turning. I couldn't see from where I was, but it's all working out okay. Looks like. That seems like a win to me. With that level of weight on it, I don't even see it there, but there is some clearance between the cable and that top bar, so we're pretty good there. I'm calling it a successful day. I don't see what else I can move with this thing. I got some gussets in. This is actually the uh, square I cut out of here. Cut it in half diagonally, fit perfect there. So I got one on either side. And that ties in this cross member, that I-beam, and this beam. So uh, that should be nice and sturdy. So I'm going to go immediately to dragging the largest vehicle I have, a motorhome, sideways. Now, I have the main straps going from the leaf springs of the motorhome to the toe eye on the tug. Then I'm going to use the boom going to the rim. I got a strap running through the holes in the rim. I'm just going to lift up a little bit. I'm not going to try to pick it up. I just want to take some weight off it.
I think I'm digging holes. So apparently there's a little bit of a learning curve with this. What I discovered is as soon as I dig holes, you're no longer pulling straight forward. You're now trying to lift up. The tires are actually pushing the whole vehicle up. And if you have a lot of weight in the back, it has to lift all that weight to get out of the hole. So the thing I learned here is that basically as soon as the tire spins and starts digging, I have to stop. And there's no way I'm going to pull after I dig a hole. So uh, basically I have to stop and reposition, which is easy, especially with the rear wheels turning. I can just drive sideways and re realign myself. But uh, I got to remember that once I dig a hole to stop, do something different. Let me show you a few features about this. As I had two 10 foot pieces of this I-beam kicking around here for a long time, and uh, I finally found a use for them. Not only that, I used them pretty much entirely. Uh, this is all I have left. I've got just uh, three big pieces and one tiny little stub, and um, that's it. I used up the other 20 foot all inside this build. So uh, pretty happy with uh, finally putting that stuff to good use. And the only thing I had to buy, as far as metal goes, was uh, the Fairlead boom. And I just used the tubing that came with that. Um, obviously I bought the winch, but everything else was scrap I had lying around. And uh, I had to buy a full spool of welding wire, because I used uh, probably five to eight pounds of welding wire in this build. This actually isn't welded to the truck at all. Those six mounting bolts are the only thing holding everything to the truck. I mean, they're sturdy, they're going to the frame, but that's it. If I take those six bolts out, this entire unit, the winch, everything, the whole boom will all slide out of the vehicle. All I have to do is take off the two electrical wires and I can uh, reattach this to another vehicle if I wanted to and return this one to original condition. But uh, this one seems like the right choice for this unit right now. But at least it's a reversible change and it'll be potentially useful later on. Now this re remote for the winch is really handy. Now with all my other lifting vehicles, like the other winch truck, you have to operate it from inside the cab. Now in order to operate this, that's the PTO drive lever for forward and reverse and neutral. Then basically what you do is you engage it into a direction and then you let out the clutch to make the winch operate. Which means in order to make it go up and down, you have to sit in here and operate it. But your load is way, way, way out there. So in order to hook up a cable, you go out there, in there, out there, in there, and so forth. With this one, you can walk around with the control wherever you want. I can go way out here, well past the vehicle, and still operate the winch. Now the forklift's a little easier. You have controls on the side here. You can actually stand outside the vehicle and operate it but um, you can't be next to your load or manipulate it in any way while you're doing the lifting. Now this is a good example of what I was talking about. Uh, this frame section here. I've moved it with a forklift before. It's a little too long, it's hard to balance, and it has a habit of trying to fall off the forks. Uh, I can lift it with the uh, half-track winch truck, but in order to hook it up I need to hop in the truck, let out the winch cable, hop out, hope I get the right length, try to hook it up, hop back in, take up the slack, it's, a, it's a more of a process. With this one, I've got my little pendant here. So, not quite long enough, let me go a little further. Oh, I don't have to climb in the cab. Perfect.
go. So that's a lot easier to deal with. Now the same thing applies for letting it down. It's really handy to be right next to the thing because it swings pretty free. So I want to turn this 90 degrees. I can easily do it by hand, but if I had to jump in the cab to operate the winch, I couldn't. What I used to do in that case is I'd get something spinning back and forth and try to drop it and land on the ground just to the right time in the orientation I wanted. This is a lot easier. So we're just gonna, well, let's let it down a little. I'm just gonna roll it around to the spot I want. Oh yeah, that looks perfect. By far the easiest I've ever moved that piece. This is definitely winning. It also reaches into the cab with plenty of extra length, so I can operate it from inside too. I found this piece of framework in my scrap pile, and this is a real thick wall tube. Also, basically it's a tube welded to a tube, which gives me an idea. First I gotta cut this section off. I'm gonna keep a stub of the tube welded on it though. The opposite end of that tube, I'm gonna weld on some pieces of bent up old angle iron. Because with what I'm doing, square doesn't really matter. So we're gonna pop these on like that. That should do well. Now here's my plan with these poles. Uh, I made a pin out of some scrap metal. I'm gonna take the end with the tubing on it and drop that right in. All this stuff's a real loose fit, so it can wiggle around. Slide this one up. Slide the hitch pin to hold it all together. Now I have two poles fairly firmly attached to the vehicle. Now I've got to get these poles on that front end. I think I can use the winch to just pull it a little closer. There we are. Now what I'm going to do is take the pole, put it on top of the bumper, bolted a piece of chain to it, welded a hook, bring this around, clip that on. There we go. And now these poles are attaching the toe eye to that bumper. All right, I'm just gonna throw a ratchet strap between these so they don't go flying apart. Now effectively what I've made here is an old style tow truck. And I can just pull this around the poles will keep it a fixed distance away from me, and I can just tow it around wherever I want and actually aim this thing, rather than having to get out and steer it every time, like I used to do. At this point, I've turned this thing from potential scrap metal into the most useful vehicle I have. It's effectively a highly maneuverable, heavy-duty tow truck. Uh, I've got the four-wheel steering and the four-wheel drive and the short wheelbase. I can get in pretty much anywhere, and uh, it can pull pretty much anything, at least anything that I have. I have actually created the tow tug. Half tow truck, half aircraft tug, all useful. I had a lot of fun getting this thing running and building it. And uh, now it turned into something that's really handy to have around. So uh, I'm going to get a lot of use out of this thing. Um, hope you guys are having fun too. We'll see you next time.